Hey everybody, welcome back to HBC Tech Shorts, the engineering water cooler here in AWS. This week we're talking to Lee Pang in Washington State. Hey Lee. Hello, how's it going? Pretty cool. Welcome to Tech Shorts. So you're going to talk to us about Hi, Amazon Omics. In fact, I'm hoping that you're going to give us a full soup to nuts demo of Amazon Omics so that people understand how easy this thing is to use. Absolutely. Um, that's what I want to do today. Um, uh, I want to show you kind of how you use Amazon Omics end to end. So that's starting with like uh, raw sequences uh, and reference sequences, um, and then taking the, that information into uh, a data processing workflow. So a secondary analysis workflow that will compare uh, raw sequences to a reference and generate uh, variant calls out of that, and then take those variant calls, put them into a analytical database of sorts, um, and then query on, on those variants. So you can get some deeper insights into why those variants are important and why uh, and what you can do about them. Awesome. All right, so here I am. Um, I am on the Amazon Omics console. So we're gonna go over here to um, storage and under there we're gonna see uh, we have reference store. Um, I've already got one imported in here. So I've got actually HG38, otherwise known as GRCH38. Um, I'll use this or I'll reference this later and in other parts of, of Omics, but I want to really show you just how easy it is to get data in. So we're going to start here um, and we're going to import a reference genome. In this case, I'm going to call it, say, HG19. Um, this is the reference I'm going to point to. And I'm going to grab it from S3. I have this already in uh, one of the buckets I have uh, in this account. So we'll go here to demo and data and references and here under HG19. Uh, so I'll grab that file and I'll say choose. Uh, and then I'm going to use a service role that I have here. So this is just an IAM role that says, uh, I give you Omics uh, the service access to this location in, in S3. Um, so I'm going to go into it, click that red, orange button, and it should take a couple of minutes to import. All right, so um, so we're done. Uh, we get the genome uh, name and ARN, but I think probably the more important thing is we have this, which is a, a special URI that Omics provides for uh, references, but also we'll see it, um, in, in a little bit that you could potentially reference in uh, in workflows or for other uh, other use cases that you would need uh, sequencing data for. Uh, the next thing you'll probably want to import is raw sequences. If we go back to Omics and we go down to sequence stores, this is where we upload things like fast queues, BAMs, CRAMs, all of the, the the typical things that you would generate off of a commercial DNA sequencer. So if we get on here, I've already got a sequence store created. Um, if I click on this, uh, I've got a, a sample uh, imported here, but I'm going to import it, uh, another one just for just to show you what the process is like. Um, so we're going to click on this button here called uh, import genomic files. And then here we'll see this is where references come into play. So um, I've got now I've got two references in here. I've got HD38. I've got HD19. Um, so again, same same idea. This is going to be a service role uh, that says I have access to the data that you're, you want me to fetch and, and pull into the sequence store. Uh, and so then I'm going to pull a manifest file here. Um, it's for HG002. Um, and if we pull this in, what we see is this is uh, this is another sample. Um, this happens to be one of the uh, Ashkenazim trio. So you can see the subject ID. You can see the sample ID. And some extra uh, description fields and, and extra tags. And where this is important is uh, we have a lot of customers who need to collect all of the their samples and their sequences for specific projects or specific cohorts. Um, all of this metadata is there for you to help organize. All right, so we'll create this import job. Um, this will take a few minutes. Uh, one thing I want to do, I do want to show you about this as well, um, is so if we got, we go back to our sequence store, any imports that you do bring into a uh, sequence store, they have a unique ID. Uh, that's important for uh, cases where you need um, immutable data uh, uh, sources. So cases mm -hmm. where you, you need to track provenance of uh, where your information came from. Uh, we can see all of the information associated with it. This is all the metadata that we provided on imports. We have this uh, read set URI that is here. Uh, again, this is how you would refer to this particular read set data. Uh, in da any downstream analysis. Uh, the other thing I want to also show you is that this is uh, this kind of category or this uh, metadata of total bases. It knows that these are uh, DNA sequence files. 
um, and it knows that the most important metric in a genomic sequence file is the number of bases there are in there. Um, and so that's actually how omic storage uh, does costing. So now what that liberates folks in the space to do is to think more about costs in terms of read depth as opposed to uh, bytes and compression ratios. Next thing we want to do is we'll probably want to process this. Um, and so if we go down here to workflows in the omics console, steps are pretty straightforward. You create a workflow, you define what that workflow is supposed to do through specific definitions. So we're talking about uh, Whittle or Nextflow based uh, workflow uh, definition scripts, define what parameters that uh, that workflow is going to take, and then start a run and actually specify real parameter values. So I'll go through that what that process looks like. I've created a couple already, uh, but I'll show you what it looks like to actually like create a workflow from, from scratch. So, um, so we'll go here and click that orange button. And then we'll go down here and we'll say, uh, give it a workflow definition. So I'm going to grab GATK best practices workflow. It's defined using Whittle. The, the workflow entry point is main.whittle. Next, here's where you'd say, this is what parameters this workflow takes. Uh, this one in particular has about 16 or so. And this is all your standard stuff, right? All right, we will go forward and create the workflow. Once this is in, uh, you can go ahead and you can run it. Here we'll use a service role again. Uh, workflow output destination. Uh, when a workflow finishes, all of the results that that workflow generates will go to this put uh, this location, uh, and then we'll say next. And now here we tell it what actual parameters to run with. These are where we can bring in data that we've stored in omics storage. So in this case here, I'm using one of those. Uh, uh, omics URIs, uh, you're not limited to just using omics storage. Like we've designed workflows to uh, to certainly meet customers where they are today. We know that there's still a lot of data spread out there. And so you can see here that there are a couple of other uh, of S3 URIs as well. So you're meant to be able to mix these things together. Uh, hit next. Uh, we'll not run with a run group. Um, what these are is they're more of a uh, cost and access control mechanisms. I, I sort of interpret this as a run group is, is sort of like a batch queue. So you're saying, mm -hmm. you know, these can run in a batch queue. And so therefore, there's a finite amount of infrastructure available for that queue, right? Is that a good yep. way of interpreting it? It's, it's probably a reasonable analogy, yeah. All right, so we'll go ahead and create the run. Uh, this workflow uh, does take a bit of time. Like Martha Stewart, here's one you based yes. earlier. Exactly. Uh, under workflows, you have um, a page for runs. Uh, and we can see we've got a couple uh, a couple that I've completed before. Uh, this is the one, this is a full fat sample that ran with this exact same workflow, but against uh, a very popular um, set of data. So, um, so if we click here you see all of the parameters that I ran. And again, you can see that I pointed to uh, data from OMIX. Uh, that was mm -hmm. another read set that I imported earlier. Uh, and then also what's important as well is you can see all of the tasks that ran. And then as far as like results go, um, this one went to here, uh, to this particular bucket in S3. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to open it up in the S3 console. And so here we have uh, an output directory of all of the uh, all of the outputs that this thing uh, produced. So, uh, once you have a VCF file, what can you do with it? Um, most times, folks are going to want to query that. They want to say what variants are there, uh, what locations are are um, are they in, what genes do they impact. Um, and we could, if we if you really wanted to, you could drop this out and look at it in uh, local files. But that's that's not really what uh, what we want to do here, right? We want to look at these data at scale in an easy to query format that we can apply uh, extra analytics on or just simple data science or machine learning on. Um, so what we want to do is now we're going to drop into Amazon Omics Analytics. Uh, in this case, we're going to use a variant store. Uh, and this variant stores are specific to uh, VCF data. And so the process is pretty simple. You create a variant store, uh, you put import variant data, and then you go and query it. I'll go and import the data that I just created. And then we will create the import job. Uh, while we're waiting for this, is we can also pop over to the annotation store and import annotations as well. Variants by themselves don't necessarily make uh, a whole lot of sense. That's where annotations come in. So we have we recognize that's an important part of the workflow. So uh, we built annotation stores to help you bring that in and have that uh, queryable alongside with your uh, with your variants. You create a store, you import the data, uh, and then you have it in a queryable form. These import jobs roughly take uh, a few minutes to, to complete. Um, 
Um, so, all right. So let's go. Let's go take a look at what's going on in here. So um, I'm going to grab our, my variant store here. It should take you to Athena. Uh, you can, if you go open up the query editor, I have a couple of queries that I've already run here. Um, but let's take a look at uh, variants. In this case, I created a database called Omics DB. I've attached my variant store and called it uh, Omics Variants as a table or a schema within that database. And so we can, um, if we run that query, we can see that we you know, we get variants, so on and so forth. Any all the information that you'd see in a um, uh, in a VCF file. Um, and so you can also do that with uh, with annotations. And so I'll just kind of preview that table as well. So while this runs a couple of seconds, this is uh, this looks like what you'd expect. Again, this came from a VCF file, so it looks fairly similar to what we saw before. Mm -hmm. uh, the only added difference here is this this is coming from ClinVar, and ClinVar has extra attributes uh, and then other stuff in here. So you might, if, if we scroll through here, you can see other things, uh, other databases and other annotations. So there you go. I mean, end to end, I mean, that's, that's generally the process wow. that you can go from raw sequence <clears throat> all the way out to uh, a a table of like important variants. What's um, and what's even cooler about that is that Athena has like if you if uh, if you're more of a software developer or someone that likes to stay in code, uh, so like a data scientist for, or per, uh, uh, per se, um, you can. Athena has connectors, so you can use say the AWS SDK for pandas. You can connect to uh, your Athena uh, data your databases or data schemas via mm -hmm. Athena. And then you can, within a Jupyter Notebook, you can pull down, uh, you can make queries against Athena and pull down data frames. Turn them into uh, data and then, frames. And, oh, wow, that's cool. And then you can do ML uh, and or other things that you, know, you, you want to do as a data scientist. So this it makes really it cool. super easy to go from you, you as a data scientist who might, might not know about like how to import genomic formats uh, or deal with VCF files can now do this really easily. So. If you learned something from this talk, then please consider giving us a like and subscribing to the channel so you can find out when more videos like this are available. And if there's an area you'd like to see us go deeper into, uh, don't hesitate to reach out and let us know. See you next time.